Well, can I welcome you all to BCF and, and especially welcome to Pete and Pat who have agreed to participate in the service today. So we're really grateful to you for doing so. It's a great day and, and it's a Sunday and it's the day we come to worship the Lord. And it's a fresh day, fresh off the shelf of heaven, as Mick Woodhead used to say. Um, and it's a special day for us all, isn't it? So uh, shall we just start in prayer? Dear Lord Jesus, we just thank you that we can meet in your name. And we ask, Lord, that you would speak to us today and we would hear your voice. We ask this in your dear name. Amen. 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 Okay, well, there's several notices before we start properly. Um, the first one is that the midweek Zoom meeting will be on Thursday this week, not Wednesday, it will be on Thursday at 11 a.m. And that's uh, in order to enable other people who do child mining to actually get there. So it's Spanish time, by the way, for all us people in England who get it wrong, me included. Um, and we'll be discussing the second episode uh, of the prayer course written by Pete Gregg, who is founder of the 24-7 uh, Prayer Initiative. So if you'd like to um, join us, please let us know. Uh, it's a really good course uh, and one that makes you think. Um, next Sunday on the 17th will be an online recorded service. And if my memory serves me correctly, that's Hugh, Hugh is preaching next week. So yeah, Hugh Williams. Um, okay, so let's just pray again before we actually get going. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. And Lord, we come before you this morning to worship and adore you. That's our main aim in life, Lord, to worship and adore you because you are a good God. You are our God and you are our reason for everything. Lord, we come with our hearts open to you and we ask that you enlighten us today and we ask, Lord, that we can worship you in your name. Amen. Amen. Okay. Um, I'm, I've been asked if I will read uh, Psalm 95, a verse of it anyway, or two. Uh, so here we go. Psalm 95. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. Amen. <clears throat> We're going to listen now to um, two worship songs. Uh, the first one is In Christ Alone, and then Jesus is the Center, and that will lead into the prayer time, which will be led by Pete and Pat Kingdom. Enjoy the service. Okay. <laughs> In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my life, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground. Firm through the fiercest drought and storm What heights of love, what depths of peace When fears are stilled, when striving ceases, My comforter, my all in all Here in the love of Christ I stand in Christ alone, confess in helpless faith. Till on that cross as Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied. Oh, never sin on the day. Here in the death of Christ, I live.
Thanks for inviting us to your service. It's really lovely to be part of you today and just to uh, see you all again. It's really nice. 
Uh, I don't think any of us need your mind in that 2020 has been a rather uh, difficult year, an interesting year. And I think each of us has most probably um, had to have some heartache and disappointment in one form or another. But, you know, as we begin this time of prayer, let's just... Uh, our response be one of gratitude to God for all his goodness and his greatness. And I'm just going to read a little bit of uh, Psalm 36 from the Passion Translation. But you, O Lord, your mercy seat is limitless, reaching higher than the highest heavens. Your great faithfulness is so infinite, stretching over the whole earth. Your righteousness is unmovable, just like the mighty mountains. Your judgments are as full of wisdom as the oceans are full of water. Your tender care and kindness leave no one forgotten, not even a man, nor even a mouse. O oh God, how extravagant is your, cherish, your cherishing love. All mankind can find a hiding place under the shadow of your wings. All may drink of the anointing from the abundance of your house. And Father God, we thank you for your extravagant, cherishing love. That Lord, that you have been with each one of us throughout 2020. Lord, we recognise the good times, but we also acknowledge that there have been times that have been not so good. And perhaps we can just take a few quiet moments now to express our own thankfulness to God that through it all, the good times and the bad times, he has walked each step of the journey with us, that he has been faithful. He's never left us. And Father God, we thank you that in a world that seems full of bad news, that you still are our faithful God. We pray now for those who are troubled and anxious, whether because of physical or mental health issues, bereavement, loneliness, unemployment, or loss of income. Father, we think especially of our dear friends, Eric and Lorraine and their family at this time, and pray, Lord, that you will really draw near to them and you will be their comfort and their strength. And perhaps now each of us can just think of a few people who are on our mind, who we know have gone through a really hard time and just bring them now before the Lord. Lord, because you are a God full of compassion and mercy, we ask that you will draw near to all those people who we've just thought about. And even though, Lord, some of them may be finding it hard to draw near to you, we ask that you will give us all your peace and joy and make us whole. And Father God, we remember the world that we live in. Lord, we thank you for your great creation that we can enjoy, that we can experience every day. And Lord, we remember especially today uh, the country of Spain and uh, Lord, we pray for it and its leaders. Lord, after the uh, pandemic and during the pandemic, give them wisdom, give them strength as they seek to help that nation. And Lord, with the snow causing havoc in certain parts of Spain this last weekend, we ask for your peace for those that have lost people. And we also ask, Lord, that uh, the right services will become available to people so they can get on with their lives a little bit more. And thinking wider afield, Lord, we pray especially today for those brothers and sisters that are persecuted across the world, persecuted because they believe in you and they trust in you. Lord, as they enter a new year, some of them locked up, some of them without jobs, without reason. 
some where their families are being hurt, some where they haven't got food and resources that they need. Lord, we pray for strength for them, that you would really strengthen them. Lord, that they would be encouraged by you and they would really just respond, Lord, to you. And Lord, we pray for the authorities that do these things, Lord, that you would soften their hearts and that you would recognise, help them recognise that you are the God, the one and only God. Thank you, Lord. And Father God, as we prepare now for this new year, we just lay before you our hopes and dreams. And we're going to end with a prayer written by John Wesley in 1775 that is prayed by millions of Methodists at the start of each new year. Lord, I am no longer my own, but yours. Put me to do what you will. Rank me with whom you will. Put me to doing, put me to suffering. Let me be employed by you or laid aside for you, exalted for you, or brought low for you. Let me be full, let me be empty. Let me have all things, let me have nothing. I freely and wholeheartedly yield all things to your pleasure and disposal. And now glorious and blessed God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you are mine and I am yours, so be it. And the covenant now made on earth, let it be ratified in heaven. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you, Peter and Pat. That was great to have those prayers brought to us. Um, what a wonderful prayer at the end. It just rung a, I couldn't think why it rang a bell with me. And then I realised it's probably because I spent several of my teenage years being taken to a Wesleyan Reform Church. And I think we probably would have had that. It's, it's a traditional one, isn't it, for New Year, where the congregation are invited to recommit themselves to God, which is a wonderful idea. So, yeah, full of um, important things. Okay, well, I haven't got a tie on today, but I am actually going to be hopefully bringing a message that God has <laughs> given to me. Um, the title of which is How to Make the Most of the Next three months of your life. I thought about six months and I thought, no, that's too much. Let's <laughs> just stick with three months. And it seemed to be something that certainly I was needing to get to grips with myself. Um, maybe because I didn't particularly want to spend the next three months of my life in England in lockdown. Um, but maybe, hopefully, as we think about it together, it will have something for all of us to think about. Apparently, the most quoted verse recently um, in these times of pandemic has actually been Jeremiah 29, 11. And it's certainly been a popular one here on BCF. I'm just going to read Jeremiah 29, verse 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Thank you. Yeah. God has a plan for us and it will give us hope. I remember studying the book of Jeremiah for A-levels hundreds of years ago. Um, it's a long book, 
And the original context of Jeremiah was, of course, the exile of the people of God into Babylon in about the 6th century BC. Uh, poor Jeremiah, like many of the prophets, he really wished he hadn't been given this job. And first of all, you'll hear in the beginning of the book, he tells God that, no, he's definitely got the wrong person here. He's only a child. He can't speak eloquently. But God touched him, said he was having none of it, put his words in Jeremiah's mouth. And Jeremiah didn't have an easy life warning various kings that they needed to repent and change their ways. He was locked up, he was thrown down a well. He had a bad life in many ways, but he was so close to God. But even so, halfway through the book in chapter 20, Jeremiah has actually really had enough and he has a real go at God for, as he says, deceiving him, ending in, why did I ever come out of the womb to see trouble and sorrow and to end my days in shame? And he goes on like that. I mean, he's been going on like that for about 30 verses, I think it is. He is very honest in his prayer. In our number one of our prayer course, we were reminded the three things to keep it simple, prayer, to keep it honest or real, and to keep it up. Well, Jeremiah was pretty much undoubtedly doing the keeping it honest and keeping on going to God. But he picked himself up, or rather God picked him up, and he carried on receiving words from God and sharing them with kings. I mean, he struggled because he, often, he would say he didn't want to do these uh, prophecies. He didn't want to give these prophecies. And yet, if he didn't say what God wanted him to say, he felt like he was burning up inside and he had to. So he, he had a difficult time in his closeness to God. There are some very likable and human bits as well in his writing. I love the bit in chapter 31, in the middle of a very upbeat, long promise from God, ending with the words, I will refresh the weary and satisfy the faint. <laughs> it's followed by a little verse where Jeremiah speaks and says, at this, I awoke and looked around. My sleep had been pleasant to me. I think it's just a lovely little aside. This comes, in fact, before the section that heralds the future new covenant. The time is coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant, which is, of course, a pivotal time for all of us indeed, and looking forward to the time when Jesus was to come to earth. But yes, the people of exile in exile were having a very tough time. False prophets were saying it would all go away very soon and they'd be back. But Jeremiah said, no, it will be longer. But even in the middle of this period, there's hope. And at the moment, I believe we're all in desperate need of hope. We seem to have reached that point as we enter into the third phase of the pandemic with numbers sky high in England, certainly, when so many people have hit a wall of fear, exhaustion, isolation, frustration, boredom, whatever it is, probably all of those things wrapped up together. And there are indeed huge amounts of stress around. Relationships strained where people are forced to be cooped up together for too long. Huge financial stresses 
for so many people who've lost their job. And then the fear and stress of actual physical harm through the virus. Then there are those, of course, who are stressed by the loss of loved ones, whether through the pandemic or not. And all that on top of the everyday stresses and strains of normal living. And in Jeremiah's days, in the exile, they were also cut off from the temple. And that's where they went to get their souls refreshed. And similarly, we can't sing in church. We had a go just now. It's not easy trying to sing on Zoom. And I don't know whether your internet connection was like ours, but it didn't really work for us over here in Wiltshire. But we tried. But it's not the same, is it, as being in church together and singing your hearts out to the Lord, worshipping together. And of course, we can't see family and friends and relax together. And we miss hugs and all those things that feed our souls. But remember Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. I just want to share a little story with you. As you probably know, when we're in England, we live in rural Wiltshire. At the end of our lane is a field where somebody had moved several horses into. They hadn't immediately been able to get planning permission to put up the stable block. So the horses were outside with no shelter, but worse than that, because of the weather, the field had turned into a lake of mud and then the ice came too. <laughs> I offered our field to them if they wanted to bring a couple of the horses over, perhaps for a couple of months, and they leapt at the chance. So New Year's Day, I went along to help the dad. His daughter, the owner of the horses, had had to go up to Scotland because there'd been a family tragedy and she had to go up there. So dad, who didn't really know what he was doing around these five horses, and I, who am okay around horses, but I'd never met these particular horses, went to bring two of them back to us. Well, we had to, first of all, put three of them into a far field, one of which was a stallion, um, so we could safely get past and out of the gate and then up our lane without losing the others and having five horses careering round up the lanes. Well, we succeeded in that. We got those three safely inside part of the fenced off field. Then we went into the part of the field where the two horses were that we were taking. The ice was really thick. It was so thick that you could usually walk on it, but sometimes you couldn't and then you would suddenly go right down under the ice and it was very nearly up to the top of my wellies and then you were struggling to get your foot out of the mud and through the ice again. It was a bit of a nightmare. I approached the chestnut gelding and put on his head collar and tried to lead him following his grey friend that the dad had got. Well, he wouldn't go. He was petrified. Three of his legs were stuck in the mud, way down, and his fourth hoof was skidding around on a big chunk of ice, and he could get no grip. He didn't know me, and he didn't know why I wanted him to move anyway. And he certainly didn't know that my plans were to prosper him and not to harm him. But eventually he pl plucked up courage to trust me and pulled himself out of the mud. And those two horses are now in a mud-free field, well, for the time being. 
and enjoying the grass, the hay, the carrots and the apples and all the good things that make a horse happy. But he had to trust. And God has plans to prosper us and not to harm us. But we have to trust him. Just like that horse had to trust me. Even through the times when we feel completely stuck in the mud and that things are never going to get right ever again. Romans chapter 12 reminds us of God's good, pleasing and perfect will for our lives. And if we look back at Jeremiah again, we are told how we can make the most of the time of waiting. We're waiting for the pandemic to pass. The Jews were waiting for the exile to be over. Roger, can you read Jeremiah 29, verse four to seven, please? Good. This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says to all those I carried into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. Build houses and settle down. Plant gardens and eat what they produce. Marry and have sons and daughters. Find wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage so that they too may have sons and daughters. Increase in number there. Do not decrease. Also, Seek the peace and prosperity of the city to which I have carried you into exile. Pray to the Lord for it, because if it prospers, you too will prosper. Thank you. Well, I'm not suggesting that uh, we go ahead and necessarily choose wives for our children and what have you. And... Uh, it's unlikely that we'll be having sons and daughters ourselves. But let's focus on the whole idea was that in the time of waiting, they were actually to settle down and be productive. They weren't supposed to just vegetate and hibernate. Um, and they were to seek the peace and prosperity of wherever they found themselves. It wasn't the place where God ultimately was going to lead them to, but wherever you find yourself now, peace and prosperity, which apparently is actually more like the word shalom. Um, we're to be a blessing to the place where we are right now. So we are to bloom where we're planted. 1 Corinthians 7 says, don't wish you were somewhere else. Don't wish you were somebody else. You are right now in God's, right, where you are right now is God's place for you. Even if it's not where he wants you to be forever. The house you're in, the weather you're experiencing, your relationship state, your financial state. I think that that John Wesley prayer really said sum that up in total really whatever state we're in whatever god gives us whatever we find ourselves in at the moment he is with us and we're called to bloom where we planted as i said and to make the most of every moment and i also reiterate we're not supposed to just hunker down and hibernate we can bloom in our relationship with God and we can bloom in the community around us. Peace and prosperity where we are. And I heard this lovely story about somebody who you might have thought didn't have a huge area of influence. She worked on a till in a supermarket. She had six foot space of influence but the way she spoke with all the people who came through her till the way she talked to them 
the way they opened up to her, the way she promised to pray for them even, meant that her queue in this particular supermarket was the longest queue because everybody wanted to be checked out by this lovely lady. And actually, this lady died and the eulogies in the church were amazing and expressed exactly that. And you would have thought that somebody who was working at a checkout was not actually going to be influencing people's lives. And yet she did. And you might be thinking, well, I can't even do that. I can't even get out of my house at the moment. But we're all linked with people, whether it's through the internet, through our emails, through the people we message, through the people we can ring, through the people we live next door to. And as well as the people, clearly also all the animals that are in our homes by the look of it, Pete, I think you're relating extremely well. <laughs> Good old pebbles. So let's now just look at Jeremiah 29 again. And Roger, can you read verses 12 to 14? Yeah. Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. I will be found by you, declares the Lord, and will bring you back from captivity and I will gather you from all the nations and places where I have banished you, declares the Lord, and will bring you back to the place from which I carried you into exile. Thank you. So, you will seek me and find me when? When you search for me with all your heart. So let's spend time in the next three months, as well as aiming to bring shalom or peace and prosperity to those around us. Let's spend the next three months seeking God. And when we do, we'll find that he's right next to us. And if we feel like we're in that mud and ice, he's there ready to lead us out of it. So let's not waste the next three months let's make the most of every day which as roger was saying is fresh off the shelves of heaven every new day god has a good purpose for all of us we are all frontline workers to bring hope to everybody around us and so let's pray Let's invite the Holy Spirit to come to us right where we are today. Come, Holy Spirit. Back in the Old Testament times, the Spirit of God was in the temple. But now, of course, through Jesus, the Holy Spirit will come into our homes, into our hearts, so that we know we're loved by God. All those worries that we have, maybe the fear, the anger, the sadness, hand them to him and say, Lord, I'm going to trust you. I'm going to trust you to lead me to fresh pastures. If you're exhausted and you feel you've come to a full stop, God is saying to you, come on. Breathe in my spirit. Take that step. I will refresh you. Open your hearts. The Holy Spirit can and will fill us with a deep sense of peace in our hearts. And you will be able to share that peace with others. And so even though it doesn't work terribly well, when we try and say things together on Zoom, let's have a go at saying the grace together.
May the grace, grace. of the Lord Jesus. Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen. Well, we are going to close this short service by maybe having a go at listening to the last song and trying to join in. We'll hope that it will work. It is a big favourite when we're all together. And it's Bless the Lord, O oh My Soul.
And in the end, the love you take is equal to the love you make. Thank you.